for the, you look at your neighbor and say, you ready for the word? Come on, look at him. Wait for an answer. <laughs> Be ready for the word. Stand to your feet with me and welcome Pastor Aaron as he comes. Come on, praise God this morning. Somebody who loves Jesus, shout amen. Somebody who knows they're saved, shout amen. Somebody who's thankful that they have a seat in the building, shout amen. If you can't, if you, if you, if this is your first time, I want to welcome you. This is the kind of church where we get loud about it because we ain't, we ain't scared to show what we believe, what we, what we know to be true. And that is Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Come on. Jesus is amazing. Back in the day, I would say Jesus is just straight up dope. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, this is the kind of church that I want to be a part of. This is the kind of community. This, we hear this word all the time, community. Common unity. We have common unity because we love Jesus. Look at the person next to you and say, I don't know about you, but I love Jesus. Come on. If you got your Bible, grab your Bible. We're going to the word of God real quick. While we're doing this, I want you to turn to the book of Exodus chapter 23. We give a shout for the word. And while you're turning there, I just want to make you aware that my mom and my dad are here and they're celebrating their anniversary of 45 years. Oh, yeah. If you know the story, then you would be shouting a little louder. But yeah, man, I'm so thankful that they're in the house. I'm thankful to be in this place. And I'm thankful to go to the word. Are you there? Shout yeah if you're there. Yeah. Exodus 23 verse 20. Let's read family. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. I, I do not provoke him for he will not pardon your transgressions. Say don't play around. For my name is in him. But if you indeed obey, somebody shout obey. obey. His voice and do, somebody shout do. All that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I will cut them off. Somebody shall cut them off. There's a translation that I read about that last little scripture. And it meant to annihilate them. Ooh, annihilate. Come on, we teaching this morning. You may not shout very loud, but you were going to under, well, I'm praying that you understand what's being taught this morning. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about God's favor. God's divine favor. Let's pray. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, that your presence is in this place. I thank you for the word, Father, that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we are in the season of Thanksgiving even still, Father. And we thank you, Father, for the ability to walk into this place, Father, and to be able to lift our voice and lift our hands, Father, and open our heart, Father, and open our ears and open our eyes and open our spirit, Father, to receive whatever it is that you have for us. Now, Father, use me, Father God. I step out of the way. I, I get out of my own mind. Father, I give me the mind of Christ right now to be able to speak and deliver the thing that you have given me to speak and deliver, Father. Now, touch the person that needs to be touched. Heal the person that needs to be healed. Put back together the thing that is broken, Father God. And I pray that you do it today and do it now in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen as you take your seat. The characteristics of God's favor. If you don't know me, my name is, pa uh, my name is Pastor Aaron de los santos i see a lot of new faces and i saw the ones who were watching online i see you serena sylvia i see sheila uh i see jose i see Teresa, i see baldo i'm praying for you brother i see raymond i see david natalie i see you glory i see you listen there's probably as many if not more people watching us online than there is right now so how many of you know it's important to say god bless you who are watching <laughs> we're talking about god's favor today we're talking about God's divine favor. In this passage of scripture, it shows us God's favor. And I just want to briefly, if you know me, if you ever heard me talk, I always over prepare because sometimes there's some, there's some holiday seasons where we like to over prepare. 
because they, we don't know who's going to show up. <laughs> and what ends up happening is that some of the stuff that we prepared shows up in the refrigerator the day after, and then we have it for breakfast, and then we have it for lunch, and then we have it for dinner. And then the next day, we make taquitos out of our turkey, and we make <laughs> we do all kinds of stuff like this. Why? Because we over-prepared this morning. I... I I prepared and I, and I looked at what was on the menu for us this morning and I specifically grabbed this thing about favor because I, the, I heard the Lord tell me and I, and I sensed the Lord was telling me that the season of favor is opening. And I just have to release this. The characteristics of God's favor. If you're taking notes, you know that, man, it, when I see people take notes, I, that just gets me fired up. You can say hallelujah, you can shout amen, you can dance, man, but when I see you taking notes, boy, that gets me fired up. I ain't gonna lie, because I know that you came hungry, and that's how you receive the word. All right, let's get into it, Aaron D. Let's go. The characteristics of God's favor is unnecessary. Unnecessary. God's favor is it's one of those things when you think about God's favor, it's like, uh, man, it just kind of happened to him because God's favor was on him. Well, what does that mean? It's unnecessary. It's undeserved. It's unexplained. It's unexplained. God, when you see somebody operating in God's favor, you can't explain how it happened. It just happened. Right. But it, nothing just happened. Say to the person next to you, nothing just happens. You got God's favor on you. But I want to give you an idea from this scripture in Exodus. How do you know when you're in the favor of God? How do you know that the favor of God is happening in your life? Because a lot of times I think that we, we associate it with, well, I was able to get a new car. I was able to get a new house. I was able to do these things, that, which is sometimes true, but not always. Sometimes God's favor comes wrapped up in different packages. And I want to kind of give you an idea of what God's favor might look like. And you might today open up your eyes and, say, and see, man, I'm in God's favor and I didn't even know it. That's the kind of, it's like grabbing, putting your hand in your pocket and you're like, man, I didn't even know I had this money in my pocket. God's favor. Somebody y'all checking your pockets right now. <laughs> Somebody needs to check their pockets right now. But a lot of times, and from Exodus, I want, I want to just kind of focus in on what Exodus is telling us. Exodus is showing us that the Israelites, God's people, are coming out of bondage from Egypt, right? They're coming out of bondage from Egypt, and, and the Egyptians um, are after them. Everybody's after them, and they have no army. They have no army, right? But they are in God's favor, okay? It's, favor sometimes, oftentimes, comes to get you to move. Listen to this, y'all. Listen to this. They're coming out of Egypt. They're moving. They're in a state of transition. And God's saying, I got your back. I got your back. I'm sending my angel. And when you do what he says to do, when you obey, then I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to, your adversaries are going to become my adversaries and I'm going to cut them off. This is, the, this is God's favor. But God's favor oftentimes comes when it's time to make a move. When it's time to make a move, you'll see God's favor on your life. Favor oftentimes also comes during times of great frustration. God's favor, it's wrapped up sometimes in different packages. Frustration. How can I be in God's favor and be frustrated at the same time? You're coming out of bondage. And I, I see this scripture where, where, it's, where it's showing us in Exodus that he's sending an angel in verse 20. He's sending an angel before you to keep you in the way. Keep you in the way of God. Keep you on the right path. Keep you straight. Keep you focused. Keep you with your eyes set on the promise. Because they're going into the promised land. How do you know when, you're in, when, you're, when favor is happening in your life? It comes to move you. You start to feel uncomfortable where you are. You start to feel the, the uncomfortableness of the mundane and the routine. And you saying something deep down inside of you is saying there has to be more. I'm built for more. I was born for more. Why would God, why would God gift me with all these gifts, but I'm not able to share them? I feel like I need to give something. This is, this is God's favor on your life. God's favor is on your life. Here's the question though. Did the Israelites even understand that they were in God's favor while they were exiting Exodus, when they were escaping the bondage? Did they even know? 
Did they know? Do you know whenever you're in the favor of God? Do they know or, or is that something that you realize in hindsight? Hindsight is 2020, right? Because you're able to look back and say, oh, that thing had to happen so that I can find myself here. And, and, and because I found myself here, then I see how it affects other things and other people around me. And I'm fulfilled in my purpose. Oh, Jesus. I feel Jesus in the house, so I'm going to keep rolling. When the Israelites left Egypt, the Egyptians, they had given them their wealth. They left with their wealth. And everybody was after Israel, the Israelites. And the Israelites had no army. Have you ever been in a place where you had no, it seemed like you had no protection? It seems like you were vulnerable. It seems like that you may have stepped into something that, and oh, oops, I didn't know I did that. <laughs> I didn't know I was doing, I didn't know I tracked all that in here. I was vulnerable. I was left vulnerable. Israel, Israel had no army. When the Israelites left Egypt, they were not just leaving the, what we see, we see them as slaves, we see them in bondage, but this is a mindset. Keep this in mind. When we talk about Egypt, it's a mindset. It's a system of operation. It's a methodology. It's a belief. It is that if you're born here, you must do this and that's it. You have no access to royalty. You have no access to resources. You have no access. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? God is putting his hand of favor on them and bringing them out of this mindset. Come on. All right. We're going to try to explain this even more. When you're living in God's favor, you are a recipient of divine assistance. I've had to have some divine assistance in my life. I've had to have, I remember, I remember being in the car, be like, God, have you ever made a deal with God? God, if you, if you just get me out of this deal. Oh man, I will never do that again. <laughs> I've had that conversation, brother. I've had that conversation with God. I've tried to, to, to line up in a way with God that he was like, well, I, I want to put my favor on you, but you have to do some things. In, in scripture, it said that the angel was going to say, and then the people had to do some things. The divine assistance, or, or what I like to call the heaven hookup. The heaven hookup. The heavenly hookup. The heaven hookup. There's no other hookup like the heaven hookup. That means I can walk into any kind of situation and know and have confidence and have, and have a guarantee in my spirit, which means that no devil, no doubt, no fear, right? I've seen some hookups, man. I've seen some heaven hookups. I've seen some people who are, who were operating. Let me just say it like this. I've seen some people who are in the hospital right now caring and assisting others who have COVID and they themselves have not had any COVID. Okay. I've seen people right now who are in a house and that house has had multiple cases of COVID and the person that's caring for them has no COVID. Oh Jesus. How does that happen? What are they taking? What are they? I believe that they're taking the favor of God. Living in the favor of God, living in the favor of God. All I want to do is live in the favor of God. See, I hear melodies now because I, I hear I want to make a song about it. Living in the favor of God, living in the favor of God. All I want to do is live in the favor of God. JC, you hear what I'm saying? I just want to live in the favor of God, living in the favor of God. All I want to do is live in the favor of God. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> The heaven hookup, shout, heaven hook, hook it up. What is heaven's hookup? It's, it's saying in scripture, come on, let's go there. Verse 20, let's go to verse 22. Your enemy will be, your enemy will be my enemy. I will be an enemy to your enemies. I will be an adversary to your adversaries. That's saying God will fight what fights you. Is sickness trying to fight you? Well, let God fight for you. Huh? Is headaches trying to fight you? Let God fight for you. Is depression trying to fight you? Trying to pick a fight? Let God fight for you. Oh, Jesus. See? I love it. <laughs> God will fight what fights you. Enemies are what's coming against you. Adversaries are what's closing in on you. Enemies are what's coming against you right now. Finances is all going crazy, right? Just 
all kinds of just craziness are against you. You know what that is and you can put your eye on it and you can put your finger on it and you can call it by name. This is coming against me. The adversary is what's on the perimeters trying to make its way closer to you. God is saying, I'm going to fight what's fighting you. Is this helping anybody so far? God is against your enemy. He is closing in on them. I love this part. Verse 23. He will cut them off. He will, he will annihilate. Annihilate. If you know anything about how I operate, words have meaning and word has power, man. I will Google a word and I will try to find out where did this word even come from, right? Right? When God says he will cut them off, it means that he will uh, uh, annihilate them annihilate every disease annihilate every frustration annihilate every trigger that causes a memory to come up in your mind and then all of a sudden you are having emotional attachment to this memory and then after you feel this memory you feel this emotion and all of a sudden what happened to us when a decade ago is now all of a sudden present with us and I have to feel that again God is saying I will annihilate that thing annihilate Woo, Jesus thank you father but here's, here's the prerequisite, obedience. Obedience is the prerequisite to the favor of God. Obedience, obedience. Obey what he says. Obey what he says. Do what he says, do. And don't ask questions. Do what he says, do. And have a smile on your face. Do what he says to do. And be obedient in doing it. Do what he says to do. And know that it's God that's telling you to do it. And not just some other. Trust God. Trust God that what he said to do. And do it. And then watch the favor of God begin to work in your life. Favor, favor. Here's another characteristic about favor. Are you are learning something about favor this morning? Favor, favor, favor. Favor reveals people's true colors. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. I, I remember getting calls to do things that other people weren't getting called to do. And I remember being in rooms in places where other people weren't allowed to get, get in these places. But because I had access to them, I, I started to get that, that side eye from folks. I started to wonder, why are y'all having a, 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 a get together and y'all not calling me no more? What happened? I thought we were homies. I thought we were friends. Oh, I must have favor on my life because favor reveals true colors of people i want to take you to genesis 37 verse 3 and it says now israel it talks about joseph right joseph um joseph had many colors uh and because of his blessing because of the favor on his life his own brothers hated him because of the blessing of god it caused the closest relationships to get messy the closest relationship. He's talking about family. Sometimes family get, relationships get messy. So when relationships get messy and, and you start to have to reevaluate the relationship, you might have to look, take a step back. I call them a mile high. Look, look down, kind of zoom out. And it's like, oh, I must be in the favor of God. It's not always an attack of the enemy. It could be the favor of God. Why is this sickness coming to my house why is this disease trying to come close to me uh, why is the why is this person uh talking bad about me on social media i thought we were good but man i thought we were good you might have the favor of god on your life you might be operating man i'm telling you man Just open up our eyes jesus and let us know that we're in the favor right now favor will cause you to rise no matter what tries to knock us down Favor will cause us to rise no matter what tries to knock us down. Favor will cause us, causes us. It causes, it's the reason. It's the cause and effect. You, the, reason, the reason why you might be getting knocked down is because favor is on your life. <sighs> Look to the person that you say, you were built for this. You were built for it, man. You were built for it. There's a, there, I mentioned it before, but favor invokes divine exemption. My mother was praying over us right in the middle of March, March, April, May, June, July, through the whole, through the whole year. She said, I'm declaring divine immunity, exemptions. It touches everybody, but it don't touch you. Well, I had symptoms, but you know what I didn't have? Fear. Woo! I didn't have no fear. I knew I was going to come out of that thing. 
There's somebody who's watching right now. You don't know if you're coming out of this thing, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're in the favor of God and you will come out and you'll come walking down this aisle and you'll be giving praise for God has touched your body and your, your mouth won't be able to hold it. You'll say, God healed me. And I'm going to tell you because you're favored. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, sister. You're favored and you have divine exemption. Go real quick with me to Psalms. This is the last verse I think I'm going to give you. I have a few more, but I think this might be the last. Psalms chapter 5, verse 11. We're talking about favor. This is probably one of my favorites. My favorite. My favorite. My favorite part of favor. God gives us a shield of favor. A shield of favor. It says, but let those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy. Because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful. Why? Here it comes. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround them with a shield. Woo, that's a good word right there. If you didn't come for anything else but that right there, that's worth the drive. <laughs> you have a shield about you. A shield around you. Of what? Favor. Favor is a shield. It protects. It, 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 it can see things that are trying to come at you. And God says, what's trying to come into you, your adversaries, I'm going to annihilate them. Because of the favor that's on my life. Here's what I love what this is saying. It's saying, let them forever shout. We get loud. Y'all should have heard me last night. I was watching the Mike Tyson fight. I was watching them go at it. It looked like two grumpy old men, but I didn't care. But I was saying, go, Mike. Go, Mike. Come on, Mike. I was, sharing, I was shouting for Mike. Listen, I won't ever shout louder. I will never shout louder for anybody, any man, any team or anybody. I don't, I don't care who it is. Louder than my Jesus. Louder than, I won't get louder than Jesus. And what happens when you shout? This is the kind of shout of praise. This kind of shout of praise affects the enemy. That affects the enemy. This praise silences the enemy. It quiets the mouth of the enemy. This kind of praise makes the enemy stop and freeze. And you can't come past this place. This kind of praise dismantles the enemy. I can just see the enemies just dismantling, dissolving over your mind, dissolving over your life, dissolving, dismantling. This kind of praise, when you get loud, when you get loud, well, you don't know how to get loud? Come on, let me help you. Jesus! 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 Woo! Woo! This is the kind of shout that dismantles the enemy. It confuses the enemy. She shouldn't be shouting right now because she just tried to kill herself. He shouldn't be shouting right now because he's going through a divorce. He shouldn't be shouting right now. He shouldn't be able to open up his mouth because I attacked him with frustration. I got him fired on his job. He shouldn't be shouting right now. But if you open up your mouth and if you shout unto God, you have the victory. My, 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 my. This kind of shout is, I call this the pinnacle. The pinnacle shout. The very highest praise. The very highest praise. It takes apart. It rips to pieces the enemy. Why? It's not my shout that does it. It's because I'm shouting for God who is going to fight my battles. <laughs> he said, I'm going to fight what's fighting you. I'm going to be the adversary of what's your adversaries. Why not shout about it now? Okay. Okay. Something happens in the atmosphere when we start shouting. Something happens in the atmosphere. Sometimes, sometimes our logic keeps us from doing it because why am I going to shout? Why am I going to get loud? Why? What does that do? What that doesn't do? Logic is just computing and your logic is just rolling and ripping every kind of, well, this and that and the other. But there is a kind of thing that happens when you bypass your logic and you go straight to the heart. I know in my heart that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. I want to I want to end with this. I want to go to Proverbs 3 cuz I could end there but I got to give you one more thing. Proverbs 3 verse 3. I'm going to read this whole thing. 
let not mercy and truth forsake you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your hearts your heart your heart i know that there is mercy and truth about jesus i know it to be true about you lord i'm gonna put it on my heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of god and man finding favor in the sight of god and favor in the sight of man the characteristics of favor is that you'll have favor with god and favor with men he won't forget you down here he won't forget you he knows you need a heaven hookup oftentimes it comes during a time of move and transition to get you to move and oftentimes it comes during frustration but you still got the favor of god we, 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 we haven't heard that verse 4, but we've heard verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own under- logic. Lean, on your no- lean not on your own logic, your understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. What is direct right there? What is, what is direct? It's not just somebody who is the, who is the, the airline. It's not just that. It's not just giving you signals. Although signals come, direct means to make smooth or make straight. (laughs) All right, we're going to end it right here. When you are in God's favor, you are in his hand. Because he's able, we heard the song before, he's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the mamas and the babies in his hands. He's got the mamas and the babies in his hands. Yes, he does. He holds the whole world in in his hands. But when I read this, this is where it jumped off on the paper for me, Ma. He said, in his hands. Hold up. In his hands. In his hands. You acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. Okay, he shall direct your path. He'll make it smooth and straight. Okay, I'm in the hand of God. I'm in the favor of God. This is where it ripped open for me. I'm not just being held, but I am in the hand. I'm a part of the hand. I am attached to the hand. I become the hand. When I'm in the favor, which means that I can help. I can help touch. <sighs> I can help touch. I can help touch those who are sick with the spirit of infirmities. We can touch when you're in God's hands. He's got the whole world in his 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 hands. He has everything about me in his hands. He's got everything about me in his head. I wasn't planning on singing this, (laughs) but I just heard this when I said, when I said, okay, God, you're going to direct my path. You're going to make it smooth and make it straight. I don't know if you're, if you're in an obstacle right now. I don't know if you're facing a enemy that you can't maybe quite put your finger on what it is that is attacking you. What's causing you distress? What's causing you discomfort? What's causing you frustration? What's causing it? What is, we used to say this word all the time, what is the root cause of it? What is it at the root? Because if I could get to the root, then its fruit will be annihilated. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's a lot to think on on this. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're gonna gonna seal this moment.